Hi, I'm Mark from eReplacementParts.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix a two-cycle engine carburetor. Two-cycle carburetors have a number of internal parts that are commonly replaced when you rebuild the carburetor. For convenience, most carb manufacturers offer rebuild kits, which include all the parts needed to rebuild your carburetor. There are often two types of kits available, a complete rebuild kit or a gasket and diaphragm kit. The gasket and diaphragm kit simply includes the two diaphragms and the gaskets. The complete rebuild kit includes the diaphragms, gaskets, metering needle assembly, and the fuel inlet screen. Typically, the equipment manufacturer does not manufacture the carburetor. Many equipment manufacturers will offer the kit for the carburetor used on their equipment. In some cases, they will not. If not, you will need to identify the manufacturer of the carburetor and look up the rebuild kit using the carburetor's model number. In our case, the carb is a Walbro model WYL139-1. Now that I have the correct carb kit, we can get started with the repair. To get started fixing your carburetor, you'll first need to remove it from the engine, which I've already done. The next thing I want to do is spray the entire carburetor with some carb cleaner to remove some of this dirt and debris on the outside so we don't just transfer that to the internal parts when we start taking the carburetor apart. With the outside of the carburetor cleaned off, now I can begin disassembling the carburetor so we can clean it and rebuild it. I'll start with the bottom. This cover covers the metering diaphragm. A trick I like to use when I'm working on a carburetor is to lay out all the pieces in the same order that I remove them from the carburetor. That way I know how to reassemble them when I go to put everything back together. With the metering diaphragm removed, now we have access to the metering lever and the metering needle. I'll remove that part next. It's held in place with a single screw. There's a spring behind the metering lever, so you want to be careful when you take this apart that you don't lose control of the parts as they come out of the carburetor body. Now I'll remove the metering base. On the underside, I'll find the inlet screen. This will get replaced with our carb kit, so I want to go ahead and remove that screen. Now I have access to the pump diaphragm and its gasket. I'll remove those next. It's the diaphragm. And the gasket. Now I have access to the jet. I'll use a small pick to pull the jet away from the carburetor body, as well as its O-ring. On the top of the carburetor body, we find the throttle body. I want to remove it. First, I'll back off the idle screw so that I can get access to remove this screw. With the screws removed, now I can pull the throttle body from the carburetor body. I want to show you two different methods to clean your carburetor. Using carburetor cleaner and using an ultrasonic cleaner. Regardless of which method you use, you should never stick anything made of metal into any of the tiny passages and jets within the carb. These openings are very precise and can easily be damaged. It's okay to use something soft, such as fishing line, to clean these passages. My preferred method to clean a carburetor is to use an ultrasonic cleaner. The ultrasonic will do a better job of cleaning the tiny internal passages than most other methods. The ultrasonic simply uses water and dish soap to clean. Most models will heat the water, which greatly aids in cleaning performance. You can buy an ultrasonic cleaner for under $100 at many discount tool stores. The ultrasonic is easy to use. I simply drop the parts I want to clean into the cleaner. Set the amount of time that I want to clean for, and then just turn it on.
With the cleaning done, now I can remove the parts from the ultrasonic and I'll blow them off with a little bit of compressed air. Now we can begin reassembling the carburetor using our carburetor kit. I like to dump out all the parts and then just take a minute and go, go through and replace each part we're going to be replacing with the new part. you'll likely have some parts left over from your rebuild kit. That's because these rebuild kits work for many, many different carburetors. So this isn't uncommon. I'll just put these parts aside and maybe save them for later use. Now I can begin reassembling the carb. First I'll slide the throttle body into the carburetor body and secure it with the two screws. Next, I'll reinstall the jet. This is one part that we hadn't cleaned yet, so I'm going to go ahead and just spray a little bit of carburetor cleaner right through the jet. Then I can reinstall its O-ring and press it back into the carburetor body. Next, I'll reinstall the pump diaphragm gasket and the pump diaphragm. Now I'll install the new inlet screen on the underside of the metering base. A trick I like to use here is I'll set the screen in place and then use the back side of a Sharpie to press it into the base. It seems to be just the perfect size for those screens. On the other side of the metering base, I can go ahead and put together the metering needle assembly. I'll place the hinge pin into the lever, place the needle on the end of the lever, set the spring into the base, and then drop this assembly down into the base. and then secure it with the screw. Now I can place the metering base onto the pump diaphragm. Next comes the diaphragm gasket, the diaphragm itself, and the cover. and we'll secure everything together with the four screws. All that's left to do is to reattach the carburetor to the engine. As you can see, fixing a two-cycle engine carburetor is really a very simple repair that you can easily do yourself. Doing a repair like this yourself will save you easily $30 to $50 versus taking it to a repair shop, plus a lot of time while it's at the repair shop. 
We hope you found this video helpful. Please feel free to leave a comment or ask us a question.